So great catching up with my next guest. Uh, he's going to be fighting Trey Ogden at UFC Fight Night coming up here on March 23rd. It's Kurt Holaba back here on the program. Kurt, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Good to hear. Uh, big fight here against Trey Ogden. Obviously, uh, good to see you back as a mainstay in the UFC. When did you find out about this fight? Uh, when did you put pen to paper? So I think they called me somewhere around mid-January, if I ain't mistaken. Uh, so I've had quite a few weeks to really prepare and, and game plan or do do whatever we need to do, you know, train. Um, so I had a good little camp. So, yeah, I had a good notice. I want to say around 10 and a half weeks out. Oh, that's perfect. That's great. And were you pretty familiar familiar with Trey uh, before taking this fight, or was he one of those guys you had to look up? Uh, no, I had to look him up. I'm not super familiar. Uh, I mean, of course, a lot of times, you know, watching the UFC fights and stuff like that, you're familiar with some of the names, maybe not the face. So, uh, so yeah, after I went back and I remember watching his last fight, I, I watched that fight that night because, you know, my guy Brandon Allen was on the card. So I do remember watching that fight and, and the crazy stoppage. So, um, yeah, once I seen him, I see him, I'm like, okay, this guy. Yeah, okay, well, that, that's cool. And uh, we haven't seen you since, uh, since I guess, August. That uh, was your last fight. Was this the right amount of time off, or are you hoping to get in there a little bit sooner? Um, I had planned a little bit sooner, you know, um, right after doing the whole show and then doing the finale in, in Boston in August. You know, my plans was to take off Thanksgiving and Christmas if I didn't get a call for that final December card on uh, the December 16th. But other than that, if they would have called me for that card, I would have loved to jump back on, but I expect it to be somewhere around January or February. Okay, fair enough. Um, how do you feel like you match up against Trey in this fight? Like yourself, he's a bit of a veteran, uh, ten, a 16 and six record. Uh, how do you feel like your style matches up against his? Uh, I think it's great. I think it's a good matchup. Um, good opponent for me, good matchup for me. Everything that um, I do, I think kind of fits his style a little bit. Um, you know, I don't think he, I think he's good everywhere. I don't think he's great anywhere. So uh, it, it'll be a fun fight. Training camp, tell me a little bit about that. Who have been some of the main guys helping you get ready for this fight? Um, So, I mean, just out of my team, you know, I got a, a lot of guys I've been working back and forth with, even some guys that I'm cross-training a little bit down here in Louisiana. But I got my, uh, you know, my head coach, Rafael, from our headquarters at Grace United, Black Belt from Brazil, um, world champion, Black Belt. Uh, my coach over at Port City, Jimmy Mills, uh, going down there working with a bunch of his guys, you know, my, my guys here, Preston Thickpin, Carlton Terrence, Gage Gill, David Gordon, Seth Dardar, some of those guys. Um, been going working with another guy named Johnny Smith a lot. He's been helping me out. Um, doing some time here and there up at Kill Cliff. Oh, uh, really? You know, nice. With, uh, yeah, reunited with my tough coaches, Coach Stroud, Sean Soriano. So I've been up there sparring with uh, a lot of those killers. And, and I'm actually heading out again. Uh, tomorrow to go up there. So, um, yeah, I go back up there, finish up camp a little bit, and then come back home and just rest a little bit and finish over the weight cut. And that must be nice too. Go see your buddy Brendan Allen up there too, because Brendan's uh, sort of been a mainstay at that gym for a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah, that's Brendan's home gym out there now. He was there uh, a week or two ago when I was there. Um, so yeah, man, it, it's, it's it's good. It's good to have those guys to bounce around a little bit and get that good training. That's awesome. Uh, who did you get to work with over there at Kill Cliff? Because uh, you mentioned, you know, Soriano obviously is a coach, but what about like training partners? Because they have like, I know the gym's like completely stacked. They got like a ton of names there. But is there anyone you're working with a little bit more than others? Yeah. Um, uh, Christos Gagos. Ga yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, dude's good. Really good rounds for me. Really good training partner for me. Uh, got some good rounds with him. Got a couple rounds with Kevin Lee. Um, other than that, man, they, they got a bunch of russians and polish guys over there that are just freaking monsters that, that try to maul you which is great for training so i've been training with a lot of those those guys i can't i don't know their names can't say no their no, no worries we'd be here all day if we tried to name all the training partners over there at kill cliff i'm sure there's uh there's just uh you know di different mix there every day yeah the two notable guys uh chris dos and, and kevin lee man those, those have been some good work how has training changed for you since like since earlier in your career? Because I know obviously as you get older, maybe you're not doing as much sparring or things like that. Like what for you has changed compared to the Kurt Holliba that's in the UFC now than say maybe your last time you were in the UFC? Uh, I don't think much. I think if anything, man, like even for this fight, I feel like I'm working so hard. And okay. It's like uh, I feel like I'm, you know, it's crazy because I know everybody says this on, on every, uh, every, every training camp. You know, this is the best training camp I ever had. It's the hardest I ever worked. I, I really think this is it, you know, and, and I, I like to compare it sometimes to when we was on the Ultimate Fighter show. And of course, I worked as hard as I can. We're training two times a day, you know, uh, almost every single day out there with with all of the guys that we had. But I'm like, you know, 
how hard was that really? Because I'm being shuttled to and from training. I'm being woke up at a certain time. I got my breakfast right here and there. Uh, anything I want to eat, I'm like, but that's easy. Mm -hmm. It's so much harder here when I'm having to make these hour and a half drives, you know, up to train with some different guys or go to, go to uh, my, my guy in, in Mobile, Alabama at Port City. It's two and a half hour drive and I'm making that drive constantly, you know, every other weekend or something like that. So, and, you know, d then still dealing with the the life, right? I mean, life never stops. I'm still teaching in my gym whenever I'm here. I'm still running my classes. My kids, you know, they got dances. My kid fought Saturday night, so I'm still cornering and coaching, you know, guys. And I'm like, man. And then at the same time, uh, like, so I don't skip workouts. I'll show up to a venue of a local fight, and me and my coaches, we will get a bunch of rounds or sparring in the cage of an event before the show even starts. No way. That's awesome. You got to make use of your time, right? We only have a certain amount of it, right? So. Sure. So I'm like, man, we're, we're not missing nothing. We're taking every advantage we can to, to get work in and to train. And I feel like realistically, I'm in the best shape of my life. My weight is great. I feel, I feel like I could fight tomorrow. If I had to, I, I could have done this last week. I could have fought five rounds last week, you know? So Good. I feel, and, um, which I think that says a lot. Yeah, no, that's, that's good to hear, man. Uh, what about your corner? What will that look like uh, for this fight? Who's going to be in the cage with you? Uh, my same corner as always, you know, um, Jimmy Mills, Raphael Elwanger, and my guy, Scott Smith. Um, you know, still riding with those guys. And, uh, you know, it's always a good time when we're down there. How's this fight playing out on March 23rd? I think this has got fight of the night written all over it. Uh, how are you looking at this one? Uh, yeah, man, I, I think... Uh, I, I always like for a referee to pull me off of a fighter, so uh, I'll go with a TKO. Don't really know what round. We'll have to see. We'll have to fill it out. Uh, I feel like I'm in great shape. Everybody knows that I can push the pace every fight, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would like to get a TKO or, or submission, you know, however it comes. I imagine you want to keep active uh, in because this is your this is your third stint in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken, right? Which some fighters don't even get like a second chance after that. But one of the things I've always admired about you, Kurt, is you've you fought really tough competition, even the times you're not in the UFC. Have you been able to kind of reflect on where you've gone in your career so far? Yeah, for sure. And, and like you said, man, for me to make it back twice, let alone a third time, that means that has to mean I belong in the UFC, man, because nobody yeah. does that. You know, uh, and yeah, man, it's just. This is what I do. This has been my life for the past 16, 17 years. Uh, and I went and changed it for a thing. It doesn't matter if I'm fighting in the UFC or just fighting in the places that I've fought before. But yeah, I've always picked the stiffest competition. I've always tried to jump into the best organizations that would take me at the time. And uh, I think all that has led to where I'm at now. I'm a true believer that everything happens for a reason. So, I mean, there's a reason I didn't make it or make well of my first two stints in the UFC. And I think that's all led to now. That's all led to me jumping on the ultimate fighter and getting that huge accomplishment of winning the ultimate fighter. So, uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not disappointed about anything that's ever happened in the past. Um, I'm just, you know, happy to be in the UFC now and keep pushing forward. It's great to see you back, Kurt. I appreciate the time as always. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Yeah. You know, um, all of my teammates is helping me train. You know, thank you guys. Um, um, sponsors, Creole Tomatoes always been a good sponsor of me. I know I have my podcast, The Contender and the Pretenders. Uh, for anybody wanting to check that out, man, we, we, we got some good talks on there about fights and, you know, whatever. So, uh, yeah, check it out.